Ladies and gentlemen, today I'd like to show you the W6N1800. This is the entry-level sewing machine from W6 Wertarbeit. This is an extremely robust mechanical sewing machine, which is equipped with two adjusting wheels. With the left dial, you can set the programs that you want to sew. Use the right dial to set the stitch length, or if you set it to stretch stitch, then you can use these lower stitches here, which are perfect for stretchy fabrics. We have the bobbin winder up here, which is used for loading the bobbin with thread. This machine comes with a spool rack with two pins, so we can also sew with twin needles. This one is the tensioner for winding the bobbin thread, and this is where the threading starts. The threading pass is numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 to 5. Here you have the thread tension. The thread tension has a scale. If you keep turning, that goes to 9, on the other side to 0. Let's turn back. Usually it's somewhere around 3, 4 or 5. Those are reasonable settings unless you're intending to do shirring or creasing. So when you turn on the machine, you can see that we have light up here. There's the throat plate. The distances are marked on the throat plate, so you can sew straight later. 1 cm from the needle, 1.5 and 2 cm from the needle. Of course this is a free arm sewing machine, so you can place sleeves or trouser legs around it that you can then sew in the round. Down here we have the central bobbin thread hook. It's made of metal, so it's properly stable and durable. This machine also comes with a 10-year warranty. And up here is the backstitching button. At the beginning and at the end of a seam, you always need backstitching to secure the seam and prevent it from unraveling. In this unit that I pulled off, the slide-on table, you can store your accessories. So please don't search frantically in the box. The accessories are included here in the slide-on table. So now let's get started by threading the machine. Before you start threading, the first thing to do is to load the bobbin. So take off the sliding table, open the gripper flap, and here is the bobbin case, and inside the bobbin case is the bobbin. This is the lower thread bobbin that we need to load. We are going to place it onto the bobbin winder like this. Now we need some thread. We pulled them both out earlier. One is enough for this purpose. You can pick one. Place it up here. Now around this. This is the winding tensioner. Please pull in properly. You see, if I just put it around loosely, loading the bobbin would work, but the thread would just be wound loosely around the bobbin. Hold tight and pull. You can see that the thread has to go in between here. Now at the bobbin you have two options. You can either wind the thread around a few times, or you pull the thread through the hole in the bobbin from the inside out. There, the bobbin goes onto the spindle. Push it all the way down and slide the winder to the right. And back here, the sewing unit is deactivated. That means you pull the hand wheel out to the right. When you now step on the foot pedal, the sewing unit is not moving, only the winding takes place. After you've done a few revolutions, stop and cut this thread. You don't need that anymore. Now lightly place your finger onto the bobbin, so it doesn't come off when you go full speed, and start. It all depends on how much thread you need now. That's how long you need to wind. You don't You don't always have to fill the bobbin completely. It depends on the thread color you want to use. All right, that's enough for me. I stop here. It's important to shift the bobbin winder to the left again and push in the hand wheel. Otherwise, the sewing unit is not activated. I'll take my bobbin out, cut the thread. Now, I'm holding the bobbin in my left hand, that's fine. And on the right, you see the thread hanging down. Now I take my bobbin case and slide it onto the bobbin from behind. The most important thing comes next. The thread must be pulled into the tensioner here. Now every machine has an upper thread and lower thread tensioner. This is the lower thread tensioner. There is a slit here. The thread needs to go in there. Pull it along here and behind the little plate up to there. Done. When you now pull the thread, everything's fine. You'll notice some tension as the thread will be harder to pull. Now flip open this lever. It secures the bobbin so it can't fall out of the case. Now we can insert it. You see? There is a recess up here. This little arm must fit into that recess. Caution, keep the thread at the front. If you leave it at the back, it will get stuck and tangled up. In there, like this, and done. That's about it. Press again to make sure that it's correctly inserted and the bobbin thread is wound on. Threaded, the case is inserted, finished.
Now let's do the upper thread. The spool can sit on the pin, that's not a problem. Only this one we don't need. That was just the tensioner for winding the bobbin. It starts with number one. Begin by guiding the thread under this hook, then along the thread tensioner here and down to number two, around and back up. That's number three. This is something very important, this is the thread hook. At the thread hook you need to be careful, it's not always automatically visible, you may not see it. That is due to the position of the hand wheel. When you turn the hand wheel, the thread hook moves upwards, and when you turn the hand wheel, always turn it towards you. So when you get to the bottom, hang the thread behind the hook in front of number four, and now we thread the needle. Get the needle fully up and push the thread through the eye. Let's see if I can work this out. And there it is, pull it through. As a final step, you need to bring up the bobbin thread. Turn the hand wheel towards you one full turn until the needle is up again. And when the needle is up, just a little more. You see, the thread hook is also up. And there's the bobbin thread up. Place them to the back under the foot and then you can start sewing. The W6N1800 is a free arm sewing machine. Since the slide-on table isn't on it, you can see it clearly. You can place a trouser leg or a sleeve around this arm. Let's do that. Let me show you that this machine can sew denim fabrics really nicely. That is, here the spulky edge is folded. We'll set program A for straight stitch and for the stitch length, please don't set it too short if you are sewing jeans, at least three, preferably even longer. So between three and four, but just not so short. So three is the bare minimum. Then place your fabric under here, lower the foot and now you can step on the foot pedal and off you go. Then we sew over the seam here, you see, over the spulky bit. It works like a charm. Now, when you're finished sewing, raise the foot, otherwise you won't get your fabric out. Turn the hand wheel until the thread hook is fully up. This prevents the threads from getting tangled. Then take it out, cut the threads and done. Now we can take a look at the stitching. It looks great. That's the way it's supposed to be. So, what else have we got? I'm going to put our slide table back on. Next I'd like to use our zigzag and here I want to make a rolled hem in this very thin fabric. Look, it's starting to fray. I'll use the zigzag. There is C. The width almost whole width. Go down with the length somewhere between 0 and 1 where the buttonhole is drawn, about 0.5. Put the fabric under the foot and press the foot pedal and then this will give you a really super clean rolled hem right away. Let's take a look. You hear? The machine runs smoothly and very quietly. Hold the fabric a little tight on the back and the front and then you'll get a great rolled hem. Remember, the thread hook must be up. That was mere chance this time, but it worked out well. Take out the fabric. Now you can use a pair of scissors for cutting the threads or the integrated cutter back here. You can optionally also use that. There's a notch in the back where my finger is. I'm going to move my hand a little bit. When you pull the threads in there, the machine will cut them. Now let's take a look. Not bad at all. Cut off the two fringes here. You can trim all the thread tails and neaten everything like this. And if you're honest, this looks great and is a perfect substitute for an overlock seam. Now, what we just did was a rolled hem and the fabric edge was rolled in a little. If you don't want that to happen, please do not use the regular zigzag. Use program D for that, the triple zigzag. Otherwise, the fabric will curl up. With D, it's not a problem. The machine is sewing three stitches to the left and three stitches to the right, and the fabric is kept flat, although it's thin. Now let's do that. When you take it out, you'll see, this is quite an easy thing to do and the result is great. The fabric has been kept flat, only a tiny fold here in the middle, oh well. Give it a good press and you'll be fine, but as I said, completely different from the rolled hem over here. Now, had I used the regular zigzag for this, the fabric would have become all muddled up, but with this, the fabric is nice and flat. So the next thing we can do with this stitch is to patch a tear. 
Now let's take a piece of fabric and make a cut. Tears occur naturally through wear, so there's my torn fabric. Now set a very short stitch length, just above zero, and please use some kind of backing. Using another piece of fabric underneath makes your stitching really stable. Place everything under the foot and start. The machine again makes three stitches to the right and three to the left. If the stitch length is too short, you can lengthen it while you are sewing. Nothing can go wrong. I've reached the end, and remember, turn the needle all the way up. If you don't turn it all the way up, that's why I keep repeating this, you'll have issues with the threads getting entangled, and that's really frustrating. Well, let's see. That was really torn up before. There, I found the right thread lengths for this. It looks really great. There's a little bit left, but that's not a big deal. It's just a small area. That looks really good. So the next thing I want to show you, we also have a zigzag in the elastic range here. Program C is also available in the blue range. So let's set C again, and how do we get down to this blue row here? This is the stretch stitch range. I'm going to set this to stretch stitch. But now do not try to sew anything with C and the zigzag setting in stretch stitch. This is a decorative stitch. I'm going to quickly sew this. This is really for decorative purposes. It looks really great. I've sewn with yellow thread on the contrasting blue fabric. Take it out, cut the threads. Here you can see that. This is perfect for decorative purposes. Looks really great. No question about it. The next thing I want to show you is the triple straight stitch. To do this, we go back to A. This dial here is blue, so we'll stay in the straight stitch range. Now, I need a piece of denim fabric. Two things you can do with it. One is, you can recreate original jean seams with it. When look at a pair of jeans here, usually such thick threads are used. Now, trying to find such threads in the exactly matching color is really challenging. Just use regular sewing thread, set program A, and set stretch stitch and use nice denim and you will find this stitch looks just like it was sewn with thick thread. Now let's take a look. Take it out, cut the threads and you'll see it really looks like stitch with thick thread, although it's actually just three stitches in one spot. There you can see it a little better. What else can you do with it? If you are using a stretch fabric and use a regular straight stitch, A for example, with ditch length 2.5, you'll get some difficulties. Sewing is not the problem, the machine will do that. Now, you have finished sewing and are pleased with the result, but then you also want to wear your garment, so the needle and the foot go up. Take it out, cut the threads. Now, when you try putting this on, pulling it over your head, you would stretch the fabric and the seam. Let me just pull this. The seam breaks. You don't want that. So I need a stretch stitch for stretchy fabrics. Just switch. This is also program A. Stretch stitch means triple stitching. In this case, the machine is able to sew the stitches in such a way that the finished seam is stretchy. You see, the fabric is fed back and forth. It takes a little longer but also holds better. Now let's take a look. Take it out, cut the threads. When I try pulling the seam, that has enough give. The other seam broke when I did this. I can do something else with this stitch. Let's say you want to sew up a sturdy pair of trousers. Maybe in the past you've experienced a burst trouser seam. In that case, I'd warmly recommend this triple seam. It's extremely stable, so you can bend and move as you like. Your trousers will be worn and torn long before the seam breaks. That's not a problem. Now we are going to do a little stress test. The triple stitching looks good and sturdy. Do the triple stitches withstand the stress test? I'll grab my fabric layers and try pulling them apart. Won't work. The fabric is more likely to break than the stitching. That's what I call durable. Let me now show you program D. This is something if you ever want to sew in an elastic band. So that means we are sure the fabric with the elastic. Let's take this out. A piece of fabric, like this, then the elastic. We place the elastic on top of the fabric. Take a look, there and there. Foot down, let's go. Hold the elastic a little in the back. 
You can pull on the elastic band at the front at first, you have to also hold it at the back, otherwise it won't work. You'll just break the needle. The machine is now stitching an extended elastic band onto the fabric. Then when you let go, it shares the fabric. Looks like a honeycomb. You could also call this a honeycomb stitch. Now let's take a look. Look at that, it turned out really well, and when we look at it from the side, we can't complain at all. So also very suitable for doll dresses, really neat. That's elastic sharing for you. So the next thing we want to do is an overlock stitch. With this machine you close the seam and overcast the edges in just one step. For this you need program G. So switch to G, stretch stitch can stay in. We need a stretchy piece of fabric, fold that. Now let's see the layers together. In the past you used to zigzag the edges, put the layers together and only then sew them. Today we do it all at once with the overlock stitch. That is, we sew an overcast, all in one go. This is really slippery. Now this goes under the foot and this, now let's go. I have to move over here a little bit. Sewing and finishing in one operation. These are inside seams. What do you do with these inside seams? They sit on the inside of your garment. We've got this nicely sewn up now. Then you turn the right side out and see, the sleeve is finished. That's it. On the inside everything is already finished. No fraying and stretchy at the same time. Next I'll show you how to install a zipper foot. As I said at the beginning, your accessories are down here. I'm going to have to take that out. There are three presser feet in there. A buttonhole foot, a blind stitch foot, and a zipper foot are included with the machine. Now, changing the presser feet is really easy. Just press this little button down and the foot falls off. I'll place the zipper foot under here, like this. Now we need a zipper. I've got that one ready too, and also some fabric. The zipper is guided in this groove at the side here. So with this foot, you have a guiding edge for the coil or the teeth of your zipper. This way you can sew exactly straight along the zipper. But the important thing is, the machine must be set to straight stitch A, and you need a stitch length somewhere between 2 and 3. Now just place a piece of fabric on top. This is what it would look like, for example. Then the foot goes down and clamps everything in place. And you're good to go. You see, nothing can go wrong here. You can sew the zipper and the fabric together. The foot will prevent you sewing on the zipper coil or the teeth. This is the best method for sewing in zippers. There you can see it. The stitching is super straight. Perfect. Nothing can go wrong. The secret behind this, let me just show you this, is the edge or groove in the foot sole. That's where your zipper is guided along. The next thing we want to sew is a buttonhole. Change the foot. Just place it under the shank. You can put the upper thread through the foot beforehand. That's better. Lower the shank and it will automatically engage in the foot. Now you need a piece of fabric. Place it under there and lower the foot. We start with buttonhole program 1. 1 is the forward stitching line. And of course you need to adjust the stitch length. For buttonholes you need a really short stitch length and lowering the thread tension to 3 will also give you a nicer result. Now you're good to go. The machine starts sewing. The length of the buttonhole depends on the size of the button. Now to make things easier you may want to mark the size of the buttonhole. Program 2 is for the bar tack. Please only do 3 or 4 stitches, not too many, otherwise it will be too thick, like this. Raise the needle all the way up again, then switch to 3. 3 is the stitching line forward. So all the way to the back, 
stop, take the needle out of the fabric. Before you switch to the next program step, always make sure the thread hook is up. Then the needle is also out of the fabric. Please watch the needle while I switch. I'll do it this way. The needle is moving. Now, if you leave the needle down in the fabric, it may bend or even break. That's not good. Okay, three or four stitches and the buttonhole is finished. So, thread hook to the top again, take it out, cut the threads. And now we've added a nice gadget for you. The machine comes with a seam ripper. The seam ripper is perfectly suitable for cutting open buttonholes. Let me show you. Take out your fabric and cut your threads, both of them. Now let's see. Pierce in here and cut all the way to the other side. If you're afraid of cutting into the bar tag, you can also insert a pin across here. Look, this is the finished buttonhole. Remove the threads from the opening. Your buttonhole is finished. Now we have another very interesting foot here, which is the blind stitch foot. Let's install it. Now you need a piece of fabric. I'm practically going to baste the hem to the main fabric of a pair of trousers, for example. This is the trouser leg and down here I have to fold in the hem. But how do you affix that to the trouser fabric? Now this is the inside. I fold the hem, like this. Wait, let me check. There, that's it. Now I can start sewing. Let's see. Now we need to baste the hem to the main fabric here. For this we use program E. A, B, C, D, E and a stitch length of 2.5. Now I need to check if the needle hits the main fabric. When I look closely I can see that the needle misses the fold by a little. So I need to adjust my foot. That means I need to turn this knurled screw to move the guiding edge over a bit. There, and now it works. The machine now sews here on the hem and now watch it. The needle moves over here and here it pokes into the garment from the wrong side. So, stop, take it out, cut the threads. What I've just done is a basting stitch actually. See, the stitches in the main fabric are really short and on the right side, barely anything visible. For this kind of work, you should always use a thread that matches the garment color or use transparent thread. Then it will work out fine. And what is more, the hem is really tight. What else can you do with this foot? You can use it for top stitching close to the edge, for example. I'll just leave the foot in. I can use it as a guide. I'll set program B. There are two straight stitch programs here. A is with the needle in the center. B is with the needle on the left. Stitch length about 2.5. I align the edge of my fabric along the guiding edge here, then I can do top stitching really close to the edge, and the foot helps keeping the fabric straight. So stop, take it out, cut the threads. Honestly, it can't get better than this, really precise. So what else can we do? We did the buttonhole, we did this. Now let's try using a twin needle. I brought a twin needle, so now I can demonstrate how to change the needle. This is a twin needle. It's often used for sewing hems. For this purpose you need to remove the single needle, loosen the needle screw and take out the needle. The needles are always inserted in this way. The shank is round at the front and flattened at the back. They are called flat shank needles. The flat side of the needle shank must face backwards, then you can tighten the screw. Now, we've got one bobbin thread, that's fine. We also have one upper thread, I can thread that into the left needle. Now, of course, we need another thread, because we have a needle with nothing in it. This means you need to extend the second spool pin, place the spool on it and you're good to go. Threading is the same as for the first spool, no difference at all. Up here, in here, through the thread hook. It's just down here that you have to be careful. There's a thread through the left hook for the left needle. Now with this thread I have to go behind the right hook. There, the threads are separated. For this thread needs to go through the right needle. Down to these two hooks, the threads are guided in the same paths. Now pull this through the needle and also place it to the back. So, there it is. Now you can start. We need our regular presser foot and with twin needles one thing is really critical, never select any stitch patterns. There is only one way to sew with the twin needle and that is program A. 
choose a stitch length slightly above two, but never set zigzag or anything like that. It will not work. Let's take this piece of fabric. We'll fold it over like this. Imagine this is a t-shirt and you want to hem it. If you are using a slinky fabric where you can't feel the edge as well as with this one, you have to baste it in place first, because you'll be sewing on the right side of the fabric and won't be able to see the fabric edge on the wrong side. With this fabric you can feel the edge, that must be right in the middle there. Raise the foot and the thread hook, take it out, cut the threads. This is it, and there the edge is sewn on. So on the wrong side the machine does a zigzag stitch and that encases the fabric edge in the stitching. Looks like a modern cover stitch. This is not very complicated. Just follow a few rules. That's the twin needle for you. Earlier I showed you how to sew a buttonhole. Of course we can also sew on buttons with the machine. This plate is supplied for this purpose. It's a feed dog cover. I'll place that onto the third plate. Now the feed dog is hidden. This means that the machine can no longer feed the fabric through. Let's take a piece of fabric and a button. For this you need a zigzag stitch and you need to set that accurately. That means we put our button right under here, lower the foot and now we check, does the needle hit the left hole and does it also hit the right hole? The width is okay, but please check by hand before you start sewing. Now let's sew on that button, just a few stitches, alright let's take it out. Cut the threads and done. The only thing that needs to be done now, you need to cut this thread and you need to pull this run through to the wrong side and tie them together. Look how neat it is, just great. And the button is firm. So it's a great thing, not only can you sew buttonholes, you can also sew on buttons with our machine. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to repair modern underwear, such as functional underwear or materials that are extremely stretchy, then you can use program D in the stretch stitch. So we need to set D here first and we need to set the stitch length dial to stretch stitch, of course. If I sew that as it is now, I'll find that the edge gets wavy and distorted. We don't want that wave. What I've got here is a piece of embroidery stabilizer. I'll show you. I'll do part of my seam with the embroidery stabilizer underneath and the other part just on the fabric so you can see the difference. We'll just start here. Assume you need to repair a seam in your underwear. It looks really good. Now I'm reaching the bit without any stabilizer. Back here you can already see it. Now let's see how that looks. Up to here the seam is just excellent. And back here you see, first of all the seam looks completely different. It is stretched out. Also the stitching is uneven and all wonky. Here it's really straight and back here you even have some gathering. You'll get the same effect with thin woven fabric. Where is it? There it is. I showed you this fabric before. Now I want to finish the edge. We did it like this. Then you'll always be left with some fabric stitching out here in the middle. So what do we do? Just use some backing and try finish it now. By the way, you can tear off the embroidery backing afterwards. You can also buy this from W6 in the W6 Wertarbeit online shop. That's not a problem. So let's use program D again, but without the stretch stitch setting this time. Stitch length short at 1 and then we can see that we can sew this one too. Doesn't it look pretty? No gathering at all. This is always a handy option to prevent the fabric from gathering or rolling in. Now let's take a look. Now this stitching will even pass the scrutiny of the most petty sewist. See, no gathering at all. Let's just compare it with the previous one. Here you can see that, no gathering or rolling. Use embroidery stabilizer. It even comes in a water soluble quality to help you produce nicer stitching. And as I said, you can also buy this from W6 Wertarbeit. After a certain time in use, you have to clean and oil your sewing machine. It may even happen that you completely jammed your sewing machine. How can something like this happen? If, for example, you use a stretch fabric like this one we sewed earlier, this extremely stretchy one, and you don't use a super stretch needle, for example, you use a regular needle or a jersey or jeans needle or something, then it can happen that this fabric gets pulled into this hole in the throat plate and then gets stuck down here. 
So you have to remove your jammed fabric and frets and afterwards clean the machine and set it up again. So the first thing you do is to remove the bobbin case, tilt the machine onto its back, tilt it and lay it down flat. There are two clamps here, on the left and on the right. They hold the gripper in place. Slide them open, the left one towards the left and the right one towards the right. Now you can take this whole unit out. There it is. For cleaning the machine, remove all the dust and fluff and any residue threat. This gripper should also be clean, of course. And here, where my fingernail is now, you can also put a drop of oil on it. If your sewing machine gets noisy, just grease it with a drop of oil, exactly here and here. Now you have a half circle here and another one here. That means these two half circles must be brought together to form a full circle. So I just need to drop that in from above like this. Again, you take it out like this and insert it like this. Simple. It's going to stay in there. You make sure it stays in place. There is the gripper retaining ring. See, there's a little nipple on the gripper retaining ring. It has to go into the groove down here. So it's best to insert it from above. You can check if it's correct if the nipple fits into the groove and these two elevations must be visible. Please don't put it in with the wrong side out, because when I now shift back my clamps, they must be audibly engaged over the elevations. So slide your clamps back onto the retaining ring and you need to hear them snap into place. Also, on the other side, up to the point of resistance and slightly over it. These clamps press onto the elevations and keep the gripper in place. Now you do this for cleaning or for removing any jammed fabric or threads. If your machine has eaten some of your fabric, you forgot to change the needle or if your thread gets entangled down there. You have to disassemble everything and remove the mess. Of course, using super stretch needles in size 90 lowers the risk considerably. When using these needles for thin or delicate fabrics, this is much less likely to happen. Then just place back the bobbin case as I showed you before. Install the foot, bring up the thread. See, the foot is installed, bring up the thread. Turn the hand wheel towards you one full turn to make sure the thread hook is up. Now you can place your fabric under the foot and continue.